All right, Jewel Bowling fans, Josh Lewis here for another Tips and Trick Thursday. Uh, we're looking at segment number two of three around asymmetric versus symmetric bowling balls. Last week, we talked about the generalized core shapes and motion between asymmetric and symmetric. And today, we're going to be on the lanes looking at asymmetric bowling balls in particular, when and when not to use, um, and then also what to look for during transition. So let's get to it. We are going to be bowling on the standard house shot at Sky Lanes in Asheville, where there is plenty of friction to the outside and fairly crisp back ends. This first shot, we're going to try fairly straight and watch the reaction of the asymmetric as it encounters friction. As we discussed, the ball kicks left hard off that friction spot, but you do notice the rolling out or going forward slightly as it hits the pins. So we're going to move a bit left, allowing the ball to get to about 10 down lane while utilizing more oil in the middle for skid. We still see that ball respond sharply off the friction spot and go high. This is again because of the strong motion due to the asymmetric core off the dry part of the lane. As we move another five boards left, allowing the ball to stay longer in the oil in the middle of the lane, we see the ball now enter the 1-3 pocket. The ball has enough energy as it enters the pins to continue driving through the 8-9 in the back. As we continue to move further and further left, we start to see that ball motion change as it enters the pins. You will notice the ball here almost going straight back over the 9 pin after the ball enters the pocket. This is because it has lost energy in the hook phase and is now rolling forward. Now we are going to look at an asymmetrical ball reaction based on different bowler styles. First we are going to look at a speed dominant player, so their ball speed is higher than their rev rate. We are moving back straighter up the lane and we notice the ball doesn't have time to read the friction and make it back to the pocket. In fact it uses up energy so quickly that the ball rolls forward into the 3-6. Speed dominant players will often struggle with pearl equipment unless there is a tremendous amount of friction and back end. Solid cover asymmetrical balls would allow them more miss area playing straighter. Symmetric balls would also be a good choice for speed dominant players. We'll see this more next week. Next we have rev dominant players, so they have more revs than ball speed. In this case, the ball overreacts crossing over. Moving further inside, the rev dominant player can open up the lane, circling the pattern, and get their ball to respond well down lane. Pearl asymmetric balls will force them left, but will retain enough energy for rev dominant players to be successful. Okay, so now we've seen what the asymmetric bowling ball does throughout the transition of an oil pattern, and also what the different styles and releases and speed has to, uh, will impact how that ball is going to react. Now granted, we were looking at a pearl asymmetric in this eternity. We're going to talk a little bit about pearl asymmetric versus solid asymmetric. So first off, a couple situations where asymmetric bowling balls are good. One, longer oil patterns and trying to play straighter. Getting that ball to read off the friction spot and make its move, but yet not so hard that it continues going left or leaving big splits. That's when a good asymmetric comes into play. Um, as you want to migrate left, right, with an asymmetric bowling ball, the tendency is for the ball to roll out. We talked about that motion. It gets down, reads the friction spot, makes a hard move, and then wants to tumble forward. Pearl asymmetric balls are less prone to do that because they're conserving a little more energy as they move down the lane. So longer oil patterns, but moving, moving left, moving inside, if you're a right-hander, pearl asymmetric bowling balls can be a good start. When you start to see that rollout, flat corner pins, that's when the move is going to have to move to a symmetric bowling ball in the same area of the lane. Again, longer oil patterns, and uh, to start with, want to be a little further right, you can do that with a solid asymmetric bowling ball and getting a little more up the back. And by that, I mean imparting less side rotation in your release. Think about Norm Duke or Walter Ray. They made a living off of this kind of shot when all the rest of the guys were using you know, symmetric bowling balls and throwing it towards the gutter on low, on low volume or, low, or high friction patterns. They were to take big asymmetric solid bowling balls with end over end rotation, have the ball see the friction and basically move stop. Norm Duke was a master at this. You can do that too on your basic league shot in games later in the in games two or games three when there's more friction to the outside and you see a lot of over under in the middle. Um, you can go to a solid asymmetric bowling ball and be more up the back and allow that ball to respond and then kind of roll out at the pocket. In terms of speed versus rev dominant, we talked about speed dominant players with pearl asymmetric bowling balls will have a hard time 
uh, when they miss left, for one, because the ball may not recover. Or if they miss right, the ball's wasting so much energy that it's not going to make it back to the pocket in time. So speed dominant players have, a, have often some trouble on, on um, higher friction patterns with pearls. Solid asymmetric bowling balls and speed dominant players can be, all, can be pretty good as long as they're staying straighter, of course. When you get further left with speed dominant, symmetric bowling balls are going to come into play. Rev dominant players, being right or being up the lane with their asymmetric bowling ball is going to be challenging because that ball is going to want to read very early on the lane, make its move, and then stop. It's going to force you to move further left than you probably want to in the beginning part of a, a league or a tournament block. So I would recommend you start with an asymmetrical solid if you're going to go asym and move into pearl as you transition inside. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this week's segment on asymmetric bowling balls. Uh, we talked about when and when not to use at this point. We now have a, general, a good idea about uh, what asymmetric bowling balls will do on the lane in the beginning of a shot versus throughout transition. And uh, next, we're going to look at symmetric bowling balls and compare what we've learned so far with asymmetrics to symmetrics and how we can build our overall arsenal. So stay tuned next week to finish out this three-part segment. Um, as always, remember to like and subscribe to the Jewel Bowling channel on YouTube, and uh, good luck on the lanes this week.